Hi, my name is Etan, I'm the uh, founder of the Help Me Fix Video Chat Maintenance Platform and Managing Director of Elite Heating and Plumbing. I'm here today with Julie Ford, who is the founder of the HSPN, um, and a landlord and pretty much property guru all round. We're going to be talking to her about um, the same thing that we've been talking to other people about, which is uh, issues that arise in property management and especially related to property maintenance, talking about contractors, tenants, landlords, agents and and the biases that exist within the industry and the processes uh, that take place with property maintenance and how they can be improved and where people are struggling. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about COVID as well because I had an interesting chat with Julie beforehand who's told me that um, some amazing developments have happened uh, for her business through COVID. Um, so Judy, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do and tell us about the HSPN and day to day what your job involves? Absolutely, so my name is Judy Ford, I run um, Hemel St Albans Property Network, um, that is now in its ninth year, so next year I'll run it for ten years, which is fantastic for me because as an independent network it's very difficult sometimes to get these things off the ground when you're competing with the larger networking events that are a bit more structured. Um, I've been in the industry myself for just over 25 years, um, both as a letting agent and a property manager, I ran my own property management company, um, and then I moved to the dark side, as I like to call it, and I worked as a housing and homeless law specialist for the Citizens Advice for six years as well. I've also worked for homeless charities, so I've, I've seen sort of all sides of property. Okay. Um, are you a landlord yourself? I am. Um, not in the UK though, so all of my properties are in France, which is a very different structure okay. um, when it comes to renting. They've got two tiers in France and you rent whether it's furnished or unfurnished and they've got two different sets of legislation for that. Okay. So it's very different over there. That's something I didn't know. Uh, again, <laughs> learning new things every day. Um, and you're, you're, I wouldn't call them your clients, but your members really, the people, members of the HSPN. Um, what's your kind of, your, your, your standard avatar? Like, What would you say that, that you're your normal customer looks like? It is a bit diverse to be honest. I mean, we've got the seasoned landlords. So around here, Hamel Hempstead is very much portfolio of HMOs. Okay. It's a big HMO area here. So you've got your seasoned landlords with your HMOs. Um, we have a lot of people in, before lockdown when um, we were still doing physical meetings. I noticed that we had a lot more new people arriving who were looking to get into property and learn rather than getting in there doing it all wrong and then looking to learn. So that people are learning are learning to do it the right way around now. Um, but as a demographic really, it's very balanced, um, especially male and female as well, it's quite a good balance there. But really it's just, um, everyone in the property profession I think realises just how lonely property is. And as soon as you can find a network that you click with, then you don't want to leave that network. And I think that's the most important thing to people is, it is the members. Because yeah. if you aren't getting anything from that network meeting, then why are you going? So this this lo so this is a major thing that we'll, we'll talk about uh, a little bit further on down the line. This this loneliness that you're talking yeah. about. Um, I have just just going back to what you're saying about people that are learning how to to do property. Um, there are like loads of courses out there, aren't there? Like everyone is, you know, has the method um, or the training or yeah. whatever, there's a lot of them out there. Um, have you have you taken any of these courses or do you offer these kind of courses um, to your members? Um, and and what, what are they all about? Can you... Yeah, I mean, that is one of the bugbears of the property industry um, across the board, is there are so many people that would class themselves as an expert or a guru, and they're selling these property courses at ridiculous sums of money. I mean, really, some of the courses that you go on is actually a deposit on a house if you wanted to get into property. And um, unfortunately, these people are nine times out of ten just extremely good salespeople. So they're very good at selling to you the dream and using all these above words of your property journey and your power team and all this. And you want to get involved in all of that yeah. because it sounds amazing and they've got all this energy. But when it comes down to the bare bones of what some of these trainers are teaching, it isn't anything more than what you could have got from going to a networking event or finding a mentor or even reading a few good property books. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting. The, one of the people that I spoke to the other day said that she went to a property networking event and just was like turned on, like that put a fire inside her. Um, but I've seen a lot 
and I mean, I mean, on LinkedIn, I, I get, I get hit with loads of messages. I mean, just because I'm talking about property, I mean, like, like I say on every interview, I'm a tenant. Um, like I don't own any property. I own businesses, um, but but I've just never done it. Um, but I, I get, you know, like. I get hit with all these yeah. messages. Um, Absolutely. You know, it's ten grand ago, like yeah. sometimes. Uh, but very interesting that, that you say that. Um, okay, lovely. Um, you the landlords that are members of the HSPM. Um, would you say uh, is it a straight mix of people that self-manage their properties, or uh, do, do most people go through a, a, an agent? Yeah, it's a pretty balanced mix there as well, really. Um, I would probably say the more seasoned landlords have probably had an agent in the beginning yeah. to get them started, but then as they've gained knowledge, they've realised that it's possible for them to set up their own property management company and then employ staff to manage those properties for them. But maybe landlords with properties that are single lets, so one and two bedroom properties, are more likely to go um, for the letting agent to start with and have it fully managed. And if you've got like a property in Durham and a property in Grimsby and then one in South Harrow and like one in Hemel, it's, it's going to be really difficult to, to manage it, right? Because you're going it's, to need someone somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. But again, that's more at looking at why those landlords chose those areas and those properties. Okay. Um, whenever I'm talking to somebody who wants to get into property, first of all, I'm talking to them about why property. Because a lot of people think it is the quick and easy way to money, where actually it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And also what areas, choose your areas, do your research. It's interesting to me that people would want to set up a burger van and do a lot more research into how hot the oil has got to be, you know, what star rating do I need, what qualification do I need, just to set up something small like that. But when they get into property, they don't do any research. No, just go to an auction sometimes and just buy one and then go, right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So that that's, that's what's really important. And if you've got property spread around all over the country and there was no plan to that, You've got to factor in how much that's going to cost you yeah. as a property owner because you're going to have five different letting agents, five different fees. You know, there's no way that you can even bring a tradesman in and say, right, I've got five properties in this area, can you be my plumber? Mm. You can't even build up those relationships, so everything is very disjointed in that respect. Okay, yeah, that's, I mean, I never really thought about that. I just thought about it would be like chasing the deal, um, and when there was a deal sort of going that way, but it would make much more sense to, to have a patch, so to speak. Exactly. Um, so that you can establish yourself and get to know people and build relationships, because what I'm learning as I, as I talk to people is that it's all about people and relationships. Um, would you say that, it's, it, it, that I'm right in that, that it's all about relationships and building trust and you know, speaking to the right people? And It is, absolutely, totally. I mean, what I tend to find when I'm working with letting agents is letting agents fail to realise that they've got two people they need to please. They've got their paying client, which is the landlord, but they've got their paying customer, which is the tenant. And a lot of them seem to lose that understanding. And landlords the same. Lots of landlords with the smaller properties don't understand they're running a business. Therefore, they don't see their tenants as customers to provide a customer service to. And I think if more landlords had an understanding that they're running a business and literally went into work on a, on a daily basis thinking, I've got to give good customer service, I think you'd see quite a shift in the way housing standards are at the moment, especially when it comes to maintenance. That's amazing. I, you, I have never in my I mean, I've been working with landlords um, and agents for years, um, and this week and last week is the first time I've ever heard a landlord refer to a tenant as a customer, and it's happened three times. Three different people, all professionals, and you're the third person to say it, and I find that because you, the tenant is is the one living in the property and the one paying the rent. So, so really, yeah, they are a paying customer. Um, I mean, do you think that, so I always used to think that, that tenants were really, like, they had the bad deal. Okay? I've realized now that it was completely wrong. Um, I realized that they, obviously the tenant goes through certain things, but a landlord is also going through things, and that's what I've learned, and, yeah. and that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, but yeah, um, so, so it's a very complex relationship, I guess, between the landlord and the tenant. And if you're, if you're managing that relationship directly, I guess it's even more complicated. I mean... It really is, and, and I think this is, from the landlords that I work with personally through my business, and obviously the landlords I meet on the, on the network circuit, 
they get far too personally involved. And again, it's about understanding you're running a business. Because if the tenants, so for example with COVID, a lot of tenants haven't been able to pay their rent. Landlords are taking that personally. The tenant isn't paying me my rent. They're, they're forgetting that actually the tenant probably has a problem that needs resolving. And therefore, instead of looking at it from a business point of view, so for example, if you can't pay your credit card this month, the credit card company will ask you, what's the problem? How can we help? That's what they say on all their letters and their phone calls. But from a landlord's point of view, if the tenant can't pay the rent, then, oh, I'll just evict them. Seems to be a default setting. There doesn't seem to be that business understanding that this is still a transaction. And even with text messages with tenants, I find, I'm not, I, maybe I'm just a bit old fashioned, but I don't find text messages is personal enough. Because if you're genuinely wanting your money from a tenant, you pick up the phone and go, is everything okay? A text message can be interpreted in such a way, depending on who's receiving it. So if you're texting someone and they've had a bad day and they're angry, they're going to read it in an angry tone. But everything you say over the phone is exactly how you want to say it. Every disagreement that I've ever had has usually resulted from some kind of written yeah. text, Facebook, something that was misconstrued. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and when you're dealing with emotions that are running high,